What's up YouTube, it's your boy Soro and I am back with another Swords of Convalaria guide video and in this video I want to talk about Crimson Falcon. Crimson Falcon is a unit that we all kind of get for free and then um, through just playing the game we get multiple copies of her which allows her allows her us to level up her traits um so she becomes a pretty solid unit um i have a coal personally but i still use C crimson falcon um because there are certain situations why I, where i find her better than coal um here is a quick infograph of <laughs> all the rec recommendations that i would make for crimson falcon um, that way for people who want to quick in and out and they don't want to hear me yap about each individual skill or skill tree or equipment or whatever you guys can do so um crimson falcon is a seeker her role is a seeker um her factions are iria and alacrity kingdom of iria and her trait is called ghost on the battlefield uh, on the left you'll see the skill tree recommendations at rk1 i would take ambush rk3 i would take precise strike rk5 vital guard rk7 shadow gate rk9 powerful strike i do have a note about per, per, uh, rk3 uh but in general this is the uh, general use case for crimson falcon as far as what your equipped skills should kind of look like uh it should kind of look like this that i have right here uh i put like a swap symbol here because in some situations you might want to swap this skill uh, precise strike out with um the other skill at rk3 if you just do decide to get it but in general i believe this one precise strike is going to be better in most cases as far as her gear i would recommend ceremonial dagger or void stab and her trinket maverick's cloak or flying blade arm guard and then her turrets i would go with justice or devil both of them work and um i posted like kind of like an example of what her equipment looks like um at the bottom there let's break down crimson falcons trait here real quick uh ghost on the battlefield she gains jump when attacking enemies from the side or behind deals 30 percent more damage after defeating the target can move again by three tiles this is a really powerful ability but this also means that since she is not a very tanky unit you want to make sure that you are getting the kills with her though so that way she could run away from danger this is very vital for her play style because if she is just stuck uh out in the middle field <laughs> amongst a group of enemies because she does have uh insane uh movements on the board so she can move ahead of your allies pick off some targets if you, uh, you want to make sure you kill the target and then you want to run away um, and then you just kind of want to keep doing that you want to keep killing targets running away keep killing targets running away that's her play style and there is not often situations where you will want to be uh, in a situation where you don't kill the enemy and you're just surrounded by a bunch of enemies that would be very bad for her let's go into her skill breakdown real quick like rk1 you want to pick up ambush uh basically what this does is if an enemy is unharmed so they have like full hp it's like the start of the map start of the game or whatever or they're just in the back of the map and you haven't reached them yet you deal 20 percent more physical damage this pairs really well with her trait where she does more damage 30 percent more damage uh from the back or from the side so if you are the first one to the target which crimson falcon most of the time will be and then you attack from the front or side you gain a huge damage boost if they haven't been touched yet and uh a lot of the times uh you're gonna proc this just because again crimson falcon moves ahead of the pack rk5 you want to pick up vital guard when hit by an active attack the damage to taken is decreased by eight percent upon receiving an active attack if the character is dying gains dodge for one turn can be activated up to one time per round these are for those situations for when um crimson falcon is kind of caught out of position you get attacked you're you know most likely you're going to be dying just because like crimson falcon takes one attack um it is usually 
either a one hit KO or you're <laughs> you're very very low and this just helps her survive a little bit longer until you can get a teammate there too. Okay at RK7 you want to pick up Shadowgate. Shadowgate is an excellent ability for repositioning, getting behind the target, stuff like that. Sometimes you can even use Shadowgate to get behind the enemy and then move further along to get behind a different enemy instead. If that's for example if you're trying to target a an enemy that's kind of behind the other uh, a certain enemy you can shadow gate to the enemy in front and then move to the enemy that you're actually trying to kill so this is a great repositioning tool and it prepares really well with her trait and you know her um, skills and passives that stack her crit damage and damage and stuff like that okay at rk9 this is kind of a toss-up for me in my opinion um, a lot of people take powerful, uh, powerful attack, and I would tend to agree with them. You deal 55% physical damage two times. Again, there is the reason why I think people take this over armor piercing strike is because there is not a lot of times where, like, Crimson Falcon is not there to inflict debuffs or anything like that. She is there simply to assassinate a target, a singular singular target as fast as possible so she can run away and then keep repeating the process, okay? So, so because of that, you're going to want to do as much damage as possible with her. I do see a use case for this, so... I feel like if you want to take this for utility, it is not a terrible option by any means. I can see why people want to take this, but in my opinion, I think getting that extra damage, physical damage, is probably going to be the better choice because again, you want to do as much damage as possible with Crimson Falcon. Okay, so let's go into her weapons. The two I would recommend is a uh, Ceremonial Knife. Uh, and the other one would be Void Stab, I believe it's called. Ceremonial Knife, basically what it does is when you launch, launch a <laughs> when you launch a back attack, crit increases by 20%. This just, I mean, it just works really well with any Assassin class, Thief, Seeker class that wants to attack from the back. Um, Crimson Falcon especially, Cole too. It's a great weapon for them. This is the other weapon you want to use on Crimson Falcon, uh, if you have it. Uh, increase crit by three percent after using the skill gain one stack of void increase uh the effect increase crit damage by five percent can stack up to six times this fact effect lasts until the end of the next turn this is a great weapon for Kolb, also a great weapon for crimson falcon as well if you have a coal you'll probably use this on her but uh if you don't have coal and you have this weapon i would use it on crimson falcon this is one of the trinkets I would recommend for Crimson Falcon. What it basically does is you gain access to an instant skill uh, on top of your other skills, right? And you inflict 12% or a certain percentage, depending on how many copies, right? Of piercing damage can be used twice uh, per battle and has a cooldown. Now, this is a great uh, pickup for her because it's just another damaging skill. You can use it, uh, inflict piercing damage. Piercing damage is really important in the later game. And then uh, after you, you use it, do the piercing damage, you can inflict your usual uh, attack or normal attack or whatever ability to finish off your target. So <laughs> the second trinket option I recommend is Maverick's Cloak right here. Basically how it works, if you're near no allies within four tiles around the character, attack and defense increase by 4% and crit increases by 10%. Obviously those percentages increase as you get more copies of Maverick's Cloak. But um, there are going to be a lot of situations where you're not going to be near an ally just because, again, Crimson Falcon moves farther than your other characters and you want her to. You want her to go far, pick off a target here or there maybe one or two and then run away there are two turrets that i'd recommend for crimson falcon the first one is verdict of justice when you're rolling your turrets you want physical attack uh you honestly want to try to get three rolls of physical attack uh really want to maximize that damage and then obviously for that fourth uh, exclusive effect you want to obviously get the uh for that fourth slot, you want to get the exclusive effect. Sorry. 
Um, a flat increase, not a flat increase, but an increase in crit is going to be good on any high damaging unit. So I don't really think I need to explain why, why Verdict of Justice would be good on uh, Crimson Falcon. The next one I recommend is Temptation of the Devil. Basically for each character that's defeated on the battlefield. So like your ally, enemies, uh, the soldier that Inanna summons. If they die or someone dies, you gain a stack of the devil. The devil basically increases your attack and defense up to 30%. Obviously with uh, if you gain that fourth exclusive effect, you actually gain two stacks. So that increases the uh, um, ramp up damage that you can get in a short period of time. In summary, I think Crimson Falcon is a great free-to-play unit. Uh, it's a unit worth building and leveling up and adding to your repertoire. She excels at moving across the map really quickly and picking off targets. And she can do a lot of damage while doing so. Uh, especially if you don't have coal, you should definitely build her. If you do have coal, I would still honestly build her. There are some situations, there are actually a lot of situations where I find myself picking Crimson Falcon over coal. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on which unit I should go over next, leave a comment down below. And thanks. Until next time, guys. Peace out.